It's been almost four months since we installed the Midas MR18 digital mixer in our church, and there's no specific assigned tablet or iPad to control the mixer. We use our phones, and you may think that it's a bit restricting to use a phone because the screen is small, and it kind of is, but when you get used to it, it's fine. It works out pretty well. There's no big deal in that. So I thought I would show you how I set up the application, the control app, to see what I want to see on the app and make it behave in a way that makes sense to me. And by the way, I'm not using the Behringer or Midas application because it, it just sucks and it's really old. And if you can still install it on your phone, it will crash all the time. And that's just too much anxiety for me. So I'm using the Mixing Station app. It's great. You can do a lot with it. You can customize everything in it, pretty much. And that video also will be kind of a guide to the people at my church that want to do sound. So let's jump into it. Let's open the app. First thing you want to do is go to the gear icon on the top right corner and go into the global setup. The defaults are good enough, but if you want to change the scaling of the app, the text and the buttons, you can change that here. So if I increase that and go back, all the buttons are bigger. And if I do the opposite and make it smaller, then all the buttons will be a lot smaller. If you have different size screens, you can change the scale of the app, but just leave it on the default, which is one. And something else, auto reconnect. If this is off and you lose connection with the mixer, maybe you don't know that you lost connection and the app will not try to connect again. Unless you connect manually again, it will stay disconnected. So this is on by default and keep it on. So in case you lose your connection and gain your connection again, the app will automatically connect and sync. Go back to the gear icon and right now when we do all the customization, if you want to save all the settings of the app, you can click create backup locally and then you would save it on your phone or on your Google Drive or wherever. And then you can also restore locally and that will allow you to select a file on your phone or tablet and get back the settings of the app that you already did. I'm gonna connect to the X slash M Air because that's what we're using. And I'm gonna go offline because I'm at home right now. I'm gonna choose the XR18 model and we can skip that for now or let's just go over it. Next, 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 next. We'll go back to that. Now, as it is right now, this is ugly. It's pretty crowded. And if I turn my phone, it will go this way and come on. You can't really work with that. So let's fix all that. I'm going to go to the gear icon on the top right, go into the settings. Let's open the setup wizard. That's what we saw when you first opened the app. So if you missed that, you can go back here into the setup wizard. I'm going to choose phone because I'm using it on my phone. And the number of channels per layer. So depending on your screen, how big it is, you can choose how many channels you want to see on one screen at a time. Eight is pretty good for a phone screen. If you have a tablet or a bigger screen, you might want to see 16 or 24 channels. That's up to you. Next, this is how you see the buses. So if you select small, they will be like that. You have the bus right here, you click on it and you have all the buses. You can and select the bus you want to send stuff to and then click sends on faders and now these are the sends. If you have a lot of buses, that's good because it doesn't clutter the app. But if you only have like three or four buses, that's a lot of steps to click here and then choose the bus and then sends on faders and then turn off sends on faders. So what I do in my setup, because we only have three monitors as of now and one effect send, I'll choose the large, this one. You can see these are the buses. Now, if I click on it, I'm in the sends on faders and I click off of it, I'm back to normal. Now I'll show you also how to remove all these buses that you don't need to see to clean up the look of the app. I'm gonna go back to the settings, setup wizard and phone, next, large, next. And here you can choose what you wanna see on the channel. You can have the channel icon, so that's the picture of the instruments or microphone or whatever icons there are. I don't need to see that, there's not much space on the phone screen. Channel button, that's the name of the channel. I wanna see that, of course, fader. Of course, I want the fader to be able to mix. Gain, I don't need to adjust the gain from outside. If I need to go into the preamp gain to change it, I'll click on the channel and go inside the channel to do that. So I don't want to see the gain outside. Gate diagram, that takes just too much space. I don't have that space on my phone, so I'll keep it off. Threshold, you can put the threshold of the gate outside on the channel strip, so you can quickly adjust it. I don't need that. Info, that's if you have phantom power on or if the gate and EQ and compressor are on or off. I don't really need that. I'm saving space on the phone screen, so I'll turn that off. Mixed 
target shows you where this channel is going. If you're mixing the left, right, or you're mixing monitors, or you're sending to effects, I don't need that. So I'm gonna have the mute. I do need that, of course. And I'm gonna press on this two lines next to it to drag it down. I like to have the mute button on the bottom of the screen, not on the top. It's just more natural to me. If you want, you can put it on top. That's up to you. I find that it's more comfortable if it's on the bottom. Mute group label, if the channel is assigned to a mute group, you can see which mute group it's assigned to. I don't need to see that on the channel. And you can see a representation of the curve of the EQ. I also don't want to see that. Pan, I need to see the pan and I like to have it in between the channel name and the fader. Send, these are all the sends of the channel to the buses. So you can see where it's going and you can change it from outside. But I find that it's difficult to be precise with these. So I'd rather just hit sends on faders and send it to the bus that way. So I'm going to keep that off. Signal source is where the channel is getting the signal from. The setup we are running at church is a one-to-one -one patching. So there's no special routing in it. So whatever is number one on the stage box, it's the same number one on the Mixer. It's the same input one that is getting to channel one, so I don't need to see that. And the solo button, in our case, it's useless because we're never next to the mixer with headphones listening to it. And also we are using the headphone output to feed the live stream. The main left right is going out of the headphone output and that goes into the live streaming. So we don't need solo. You can also change the size of the buttons by pressing on these green squares and make it bigger or smaller. I can make the channel name bigger or smaller like so, to make it to your liking. Next, these are the changes. Now, if I see that the mute button is too big or the fader is too small or the slider is too thick, I can go back here to the settings channel strip so I can make this smaller, make this smaller, make this smaller, like so. Now, if I look at it, this makes a bit more sense. And the mute enable button is to allow you to hit mute. If it's turned off, you cannot mute or unmute any channel. So depending on the size of your screen, you're going to customize that. Let's go back to the settings. We're done with the setup. Orientation lock, I like to keep it at landscape so it doesn't automatically switch like that. And now this is working. It's not turning. I'm turning my phone right now, but it can only turn this way or that way. It cannot turn in portrait mode. Screen mode, I don't like how I have this white bar at the side. So I'll go immersive go out. Now it's taking up the whole screen. That looks better to me. So I'll go back here. Autosave is not for the mixer or the scene, it's for the app. So whatever you do changes to the app when you open it again, the changes that you made will stay there. Theme, you can change how the app looks. So you can load different themes and make it look different ways. That's too ugly for me. I feel like it's uncomfortable to see. Go back here into the theme, have solar bright, you have regular, which is the default, which I will use anyway. High contrast, which is like the old Windows operating system. And you have Avantis. This is like the Allen and Heath consoles. This is how the control app for these consoles usually looks, the colors of the app at least. So I'm going to go back and choose regular. That's the most comfortable for my eyes. You can also edit the theme. You can click on edit and change any of the colors of the background, the text, the borders of the selection, how things look, the colors of everything. I don't care about that, but if you're into customization, you can go in here and change every color to whatever you like. This PEQ info box is when you go into the EQ, so I'm going to click on a channel, go into the EQ, you can see you have a box around the band that you're using, and you can see the frequency you're at, the Q, and the gain of that specific band. In the pro version of the app, you can turn that on or off. It's on by default always in the free version. And the double tap pop-up is to show the mute groups. I'm gonna double tap under the EQ in an empty space. It opens up the mute groups, so I can quickly access them. Although they are always on top right here, these squares, but you can have the option of double tapping on an empty space on the screen to open the mute groups. I'm gonna go back to the settings and now go to the mixer. This is the sensitivity of the EQ bands. So if this is a smaller number and I go into the EQ, it will be more precise. It will move at a slower rate. So if I put a higher number, go back to the EQ, it will move at a faster rate, so it's less precise. It's like the fine faders. When you click on the fine button, the fader becomes slower. And if you turn that off, the fader becomes really fast and it's not precise. So that's the precision of how much you move your finger in relationship to how much the value changes. So I'll keep that on the default. The default is pretty good. Same thing, you have knob or slider sensitivity. That goes for these knobs and sliders right here and the sliders right here. And this is important. One click, 
I don't want to do anything. If I double click, I want to reset the value. So if I'm in the EQ and I double click on the band, it will go back to the default. Now you can also do that by clicking on the arrow here on top and you can reset either all the EQ or you can just reset the selected band. You can do that, but if you're working quickly and you're doing stuff and, oh, I don't like that, I'll just double tap and it will go to the default again. Long click, I don't want it to do anything if I press and hold. We don't care about the channel spills for now. Channel views, okay, this is important. If I have this button on, follows layer, when I am in a channel and I click on one of these arrows to go forward a channel or backward a channel, it will follow the layer order. So right now it's going by channel order, so one, two, three, four, five, six. But if I have different channels on the same layer, so I'm gonna hold and press on this layer and change the channel order, I'm gonna put channel 16 and channel 14, and I'm gonna remove channel five and four. So right now I'm gonna also, I can move these around. I'm gonna put channel 16 next to channel 1. So if I go into channel 1 and I hit this arrow right here to go to the next channel, it will jump to channel 16. That is next to it in the layer, not in the order of the channels. Okay, so that option right here, if it's off, and I go into channel 1 and I hit this arrow, it goes into channel 2, although on the layer, channel 16 is next to it. So it depends if you want to move in the order that the channels are, from the smallest number to the biggest number, or if you want to move in the order of the layer that you made. I'll go back here and turn it on. Sends on faders, that's very important. It's either a flashing background, so if this is on and I hit a bus, turn on sends on faders. This bus is now flashing, turning on and off. And when I go out of it, it stops flashing. On the console, when you have a physical button, this is good, you can see it. But on the app, usually I'm also playing an instrument. So I need something more to be screaming at me and like, hey, I'm in sends on faders mode. So instead of flashing, I will turn on sends on faders background. So when I'm in a bus, all the background of the faders changes to the color of that bus. I'm gonna go to the scribble strip by pressing and holding on the channel name. And I'm just gonna, for the sake of this example, change the color of a few buses. So you can see when I'm in bus one, sends on faders, it's all blue. When I'm in bus two, it's all white. When I'm in bus three, it's all pink. It's very obvious to me that I'm mixing monitors. I'm not in the main mix. Go back to mixer and mute enable. You don't need to change that from here because that is the same as this button. You can just turn it off or on from here. So if it's off, you cannot mute or unmute. If it's on, you can mute and unmute channels. Go back to the settings. Solo follows channel select. If I select a different channel, the solo will follow, but we are not using solo, so I don't care about that. Channel select follows solo. If I solo a channel, it will be selected. I'm not using solo, so I don't care. Exclusive solo means that only one channel can be soloed at a time. You can solo multiple things. We don't care about solo. Meter Meter bridge is where you can see all the meters of all the channels and buses on top. This is only in the paid version of the app. Meter style, if it's segmented or continuous. Continuous is one smooth line that goes up and down. Segmented is like little chunks that you have different lights that light up. It's not one continuous go. That's also only in the paid version of the app. Peak hold, how long you want to hold the peak. So when the meters go up and you have this little line that shows you what's the highest value that exists existed. How long do you want that to stay up? You can decide from here. Decay is also for the meters. How fast they react. I don't really care about that. The default is good enough. And the averaging is for the real-time analyzer. How fast it reacts. App link. We're not using that. Let's go now into the layers. These are the default layers. We have the first eight channels, the next eight channels, the aux and effect returns, the mix buses, and the effect sends, and the main left and right, and DCAs. You can delete a layer, you can duplicate a layer, edit the layer, but you can also edit the layer from out here. So you can hold and press on the layer, and you can open this and choose which channels should be in the layer and which channels should not be in the layer by turning them on and off. And you can grab them and and move them around to change the order of the channels. So you can see right here, these are the changes I made. Go back into the layers. This sends on faders here on the right. You can choose what you want to see and what you don't want to see. Now the setup I made in my church, I'm using bus five and six for the front speakers and main left and right for the back speakers. So I'm gonna remove bus five and six from here because I don't want to see them in the sends on faders. And I'm also only using the first effect sends bus. So I'm gonna hide all the other effect sends and I'm gonna hide the gain where you can do the preamp gains on the faders instead of using the knob, but I don't like that. And so what I'm gonna see is 
just bus one and I'm not using bus two also. So just bus one, three and four. These are my monitors and I go back here. This is what I need. I need the stage monitor to mix the stage monitor. I click here. I send stuff to it. I want the music for the drums and guitar. I click here. I change stuff. I want the monitor for the piano. I click here. I send stuff to it. I want reverb. I click here and I send stuff to the reverb. That's very quick and easy. I'll go back into the layers. I'll delete these and I'll do my own layers. So the first eight channels, yes, I need them. I'm gonna rename this to instruments because this is the snake of where the music is. Hold and press on the first layer and go to the name right here. Click on it and call it instruments. Click OK. That is now instruments. And on this layer, I will have channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. In the correct order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. These are all my instruments. And channel 9 to 16 is gonna be all the microphones, the aux in, and the reverb return. So I'm gonna turn the these off. I'm gonna select channel 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16 because I have two wireless microphones on the last two channels. And I'm gonna also select the effect returns one because that's the reverb that is coming back into the mix. And I'm gonna select the aux in. And I'll put the aux in before the wireless microphones and the effects before the aux. That's the order that I think makes sense in our situation. And I'm gonna click on the name right here. I'll call that mics. Okay, now we have that. I click on the last layer and I want to have here the monitors. So I'm going to remove these and have bus one and three and four because this is what we're using as of now. I can mute monitors from here and unmute them. I'll also add bus five and six because this is my main mix in this particular setup. And I'll also add the main left right. And I will call this monitors. And these are pretty much the layers that I need. Now, if you want to have a bit of space between the different layers, you can go here, layer to add the layer, you can click on the plus icon on the top and add the layer or spacer. If I add a spacer and add another spacer and add another spacer and then add the layer, now if I go back here, you see there's a space between these two buttons. So you can physically separate them. But I don't need that, so I'm going to go back to the layers and delete these. We went over the channel strip. You can also change the sensitivity of the faders. So if I go here and I say 0.2, then when I click on the fine button for the fine faders, they are much slower than they would be usually. If I turn off fine faders, it's really fast. Turned on really slow. So right here, the channel strip, fine fader ratio, you can decide how slow or fast, how precise the fader is gonna be in relationship to your finger movement. If you click on the name of the channel, you can decide what you want to open. By default, if you click on the name of the channel, it will open the overview of the channel and then you can do stuff right here, EQ compression, whatever you wanna do. Long press on the channel name, it will open the scribble strip. So if I press and hold on the channel, name. You can write here name, stuff, name all the channels, change the color, the icon, mute groups. These squares right here are the mute groups. You can hold on it to assign channels to mute groups or effect returns or aux or mix buses or effect sends. Okay, you can assign different things to them. And if you click right here in the black box that says one, you can type the name. So I can say mics. And now that mute group is for the microphones. I usually have instruments on the first one, microphones on the second one, monitors on the third one, and speakers on the fourth one. So I can quickly mute and unmute different things globally without going into the separate things. I find it a bit handy, at least for me. Also to load scenes and save scenes and delete scenes, you go into that folder icon right here and you go to snapshots. And these are the scenes that are saved on the mixer locally, not on your phone. So you can click right here, hold and press and save it. And that will save the changes on top of the selected scene. If you go to another one, hold and press, give it a name and that's a new scene. Save it on the console. You want to load the first one, you hold and press, load it, yes. You want to delete this one, hold and press, delete, yes. And finally, if you want to save this customization that you did, you can go to the gear icon and on the top right, right here on the folder icon, click on it. And here are files for your custom settings. So I can click on the plus and name it something. And this is now my custom settings. So I can either go back to the default, load settings, or I can load my custom settings and I'll have my custom settings. Cool. And you can delete that and you can save that somewhere. You can share it locally and save it on your phone or send it on Google Drive or send it to someone. 